Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining. Right. Uh, we'll just wait. Wait a couple of minutes for a, a few more to come. And then we're, we're going to start. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining. Right. Uh, we'll just wait. Wait a couple of minutes for a, a few more to come. And then we're, we're going to start. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining. Right. Uh, we'll just wait. Wait a couple of minutes for a, a few more to come. And then we're, we're going to start. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hi. Can I view it from my desktop? I need to have a link. Uh, yeah. I th uh, you, you have the email, right? For, for I, this meeting? I don't have the email. I only have it on the handphone. If you can send me an email, then I can open I, on my desktop. Can I view it from my desktop? I need to have a link. Hang on, huh? Um, okay, you, you can check Telegram, right? There's a meeting ID and password there, the pin post. You can join okay. your laptop using that. Okay, I try. Thank yeah. you. Bye. No problem. We just wait a couple of minutes, okay? We, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start really soon. So in the meantime, uh, I would like to welcome my YouTube subscribers. At this uh, moment, we are also uh, live streaming on my YouTube channel as well. So welcome. Thanks for subscribing, right? Uh, I've got about 400 subscribers right now. Uh, I started the YouTube channel about a year ago. So thanks for your support. So hopefully... All of you, later on, if you find this uh, session useful, then you can um, subscribe to me on uh, so-called on my, on my YouTube channel, which I will make available, right? Okay, so everything is okay. I just want to do a sound check, make sure that everything is okay. I, I actually reduced the echo a little bit. I, I realized that my YouTube uh, tab was open just now. So there was some echo. I've actually closed it. Uh, I mean, this is the first time that I'm trying to test to stream to YouTube, right? So apologies for that, right? So sound is okay. Doris Ang, thank you. Okay, yes. Uh, for those of you who are not speaking, we will... We will basically mute all first, and then uh, what will happen is I'll go through the present uh, presentation and training, and then after which uh, I will actually um, open to the floor for, for questions, right? So I'm, I'm getting my friend uh, Cindy Lee to help me to be the co-host. Because uh, when, I, when I'm giving training uh, later on, it, it, it will be very hard for me to see who is, who is emitting in the room. And I, I, I don't want you guys to miss this valuable uh, session. So uh, allow me uh, to have a, a rough introduction of why I'm doing this. Right? As, as you guys and girls know, I think we have a we have a fair mix of men and ladies, huh? so that's good. Huh? So as you guys and ladies know that COVID nineteen has really hit a lot of people really hard, and 
a lot of countries are you know having second phase infection third phase infection they are forced to be locked down so this is the best period to equip ourselves with some knowledge whatsoever to be in digital marketing be it in sales be it in design because this while the world is in a standstill this is the best time that we equip ourselves and so i'll share with you a little bit of my background later uh, i've been doing digital marketing for quite some time and i realized that a lot of people are struggling you know small businesses are struggling freelancers are struggling and i realized that that group uh, the covid 19 for freelancers and creatives where most of you came from uh, actually a lot of you are freelancers and trying to make ends meet so i thought that i will step up and share my knowledge and also bring in some uh, fellow speakers in the industry trainers in the industry to help create quality training session for everybody what i'm doing is completely free there's no strings attached whatsoever of course if you like to subscribe to my youtube channel you are most welcome most of the replay will be hosted in my youtube channel anyway right so i will make that available i think uh right now we've got a good crowd uh later we can try to take a photo for this momentous occasion so without further ado i'm 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 gonna start the training session and my um my friend cindy will really help me thank you cindy for for helping me to to so-called admin uh admin admit people as as they come in right so okay without further ado i'm gonna share my slide and i'm gonna take you on a journey to learn search engine optimization all right Okay, so here we go. Uh, yeah, I will, I will share my YouTube channel later on, right? Hang on. Okay, so today's, today's topic is this, um, getting into the mind of Google, instant SEO hacks to bring clients to you. So firstly, in order to do that, we must know what is search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is one of the most misunderstood topics of digital marketing because a lot of people are trying to cheat Google and they receive some success, but uh, uh, basically they, they do not... Um, they, they think that their success, let me say that again. Some people are trying to cheat Google and they receive some success and they think that their success is the holy grail to try uh, to win in the search engine game. And they started teaching all these techniques and later on we'll see, this is called black hat techniques, meaning when, uh, when you are doing black hat means it's like a bit of underground and trying to cheat Google. While it may work, but eventually it will be discovered. The search engine today, Google, is very smart. It has all the algorithms to track all this. So do not try to go about cheating the system. There is a proper way in which we can get search engine optimization. And I will show you uh, my results as well. And later on, we can have a discussion because I think a few of you pre-submitted some questions. We will have those questions and we will open the questions to the floor. So, okay, without further ado, let's start. So let me start by introducing myself. I'm Eugene, the SEO King, Macarus. I'm the former digital director of Standard Chartered Bank in Singapore, right? 
and I was instrumental in some of their key campaigns, like the Christmas 2018 promotion and the bonus saver relaunch, right? I am currently a principal, SEO and uh, social media, internet footprint expert, and I'm also an internet marketing coach and mentor. And I founded this internet marketing secrets telegram group, which actually grew by 400 members from the COVID-19 freelancers group. So I really thank uh, all of you for the support to join and to learn together. Let's form a very engaging community where we will learn together and we will help together, right? I'm also a certified search engine optimization practitioner, SEO practitioner. And I'm also uh, very passionate in what I do. I really help people in providing advice for internet marketing as well, right? So I have a deep passion and I help people. And over time, you know, I've been nicknamed to be SEO king, right? So, Today, we are meeting each other digitally because of the COVID-19 restriction and because we try not to go out unnecessary. So today, we are meeting digitally. So I can tell you that my digital name card is imseoking.com. You can take a snapshot of that. That is my YouTube channel. Okay. So later on, after the talk, do subscribe. Uh, we've, got, we've got like... like 68 people here so i hope to get uh mo more subscribers i hope to get at least 60 subscribers by the end of this talk right so thank you okay so let's proceed so first we we need to understand what is seo what is search engine optimization search engine optimization is a process of building an internet footprint Similarly, what it means that if, for example, today you have a new office in Bras Pasar Road, you will tell me the building name, the Bras Pasar Road, how to drive from the, or how to walk from the nearest train station, MRT station, right? So similarly, search engine optimization is, are you telling Google, right? Are you telling Google how to find you, how to find your business, right? So similarly, there is a uh, old uh, tales, right? I think it's Aesop Fables, right? Uh, where there's this character of Hansel and Gretel. Uh, they are afraid that they lost their way. So they actually break pieces of bread and they, they actually put it um, on the roads, right? So, so they are leaving uh, breadcrumbs. So in a way, are you leaving digital breadcrumbs for your business, right? So this is the question that we need to ask, correct? Okay. So we next, next we come to the question of who came first, the Google or the Yahoo, right? So as you can see, this is a timeline of search engines, right? There is a you know, 1990s are all the beginning of the search engine, right? And one of the key timeline that we want to take note is 1994, Yahoo was born. And 1998, Google was born four years later. And today, Google has reached dominance over Yahoo in many areas. And we want to know why. Because when, when we know why we will be able to rank for Google. And why is it that when people talk about search engine optimization, it's always ranking for Google? What about Yahoo? What about Bing? You know, what about Microsoft? Right? So the, the key thing is because Google has a lot of very stringent ranking factors and a lot of Google search technology is, is actually um, somewhat borrowed or shared from like Microsoft Bing and all that. So if you are able to optimize for Google, you will be able to optimize for Bing, Microsoft, and whatever search engine there is. So when we are always talking about search engine optimization, we are always talking about optimization for Google, right? 
All right. So we have 73 people here. Welcome. Welcome. So next, when Yahoo came, Google's came four years later. And how did Google won the, won the search engine war? Right? So imagine they are both in the ring, right? And they are fighting. So Google was able to win the search engine uh, war because Google has a focus on user experience. The user experience was better. When people search in Google, they provided more relevant results, right? Results relevance. Uh, initially, Google doesn't have an ads and Google was radical. Yahoo was listing based on category and you click in and then you, you, you see the company name and all that. Everything, Yahoo tried to keep it within the Yahoo site because Yahoo had banners for advertising revenue. Google had nothing. Google had no ads, but Google chose that when you search the result, it goes directly to the website. And that proves to be very relevant Although Google doesn't have a monetization strategy at that point in time, but Google still do it, right? So that's why Google was able to, to provide more relevant search results. And over time, more and more people started using Google. And at that point in time, Google was one of the first uh, uh, people or one of the, the first people to actually... Um, realize that there need to be an indication of relevancy. So Google said, the more links that link to your website, that means your website is more relevant than others. But this was at that point in time, in the early 90s or late 90s. But Google has, has moved away from there. Later, we will see why. Okay, so just, just to know this. So win the war, the race to be relevant, right? So in the race to be relevant, Google started buying tech companies. When Google started buying tech companies, for example, Google bought Picasa in 2004. And today, Picasa formed the basis of Google Photos. So Google also bought YouTube. And today, YouTube.com is the second search engine in the world. Google bought you know, certain mapping technology and that became Google Maps. And there is a reason why I, 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 I point this out because of this concept called Google Love, Google um, concept. What it means is that the technologies that Google bought, as in the technologies that Google buy, you have to be on it in order to be able to rank in the search engines, right? So we will see this in a very short while. So in the search of being relevant, Google actually launched a lot of cute animals, right? February 2011, Google Panda was launched. This was an on-page filter to flag poor quality content. So prior to that, people were saying, you know, if you have a page called Chocolate Donuts, you will, you will probably repeat Chocolate Donuts like 100 times. Then at that point in time, the search engine was not that evolved. So they, they thought that your page mentioning chocolate donuts 100 times is, is good. But actually, the words are all rubbish. So Google Panda aims to address that. And this is a concept called keyword stuffing, where you stuff too many keywords and it doesn't make sense when the user start reading the page. Right? So this is keyword stuffing. So the outcome is to ensure more relevant results and quality results being written because you don't have results with pages that repeat the keywords 100 times and it, it becomes non-legible, non-readable, right? So that is the objective of Google Panda. April 2012, uh, Google Penguin was launched and Google Penguin is the off-page penalty to flex sites with spammy links. So for example, Google Penguin looks at if you are a newly one launched website and within two weeks, you are able to get 500 links. So Google Penguin look at that. Is it really physically possible within two weeks to get 500 links? It is possible if you are launching a revolutionary, if you are launching a revolutionary product 
and you are tapping on all the news media to feature and you got international news media feature, it is possible to get that. So now Google Penguin looks at, you know, whether you are using this kind of approach or are you getting uh, links from all over the place, pornographic sites. And one thing to note is please do not use Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, to get this thing called backlinks, okay? A lot of them, they will be very unethical. They will use robots to get backlinks for you. And a lot of the backlinks will be so-called coming from pornographic websites. And once you have that link, you will appear to rank better. But once Google Penguin realize, they will put a filter and your rank will drop. And then what you need to do is this tedious process to disavow all these links. So in the first place, don't even start. Try to get uh, backlinks with, you know, proper uh, of the proper way to get backlinks, right? So July two zero one four, Google Pigeon, Google Pigeon focus on the local search result. So for example, before Google Pigeon, you are searching for uh, pink prom dress, for example. So when you're searching pink prom dress, suddenly you see a US dress seller, but you are in Singapore. So Google Penguin aims to give some relevancy that if you are in which country, try to return the results of that country. And later on, we will know how you can actually tell Google, your website is just abc.com. But how can you tell Google which country are you operating in? Later, we will, we will let you know on the secret, right? So the next thing is Google Hummingbird, September 2013. Google Hummingbird able to understand conversational search better, convers conversational search and uh, basically user intent. So if you are searching using a particular sentence and all that, Google Hummingbird will be able to understand better. And October 2015, RankBrain. RankBrain is Google's uh, secret weapon to actually handle never seen before search queries. What I mean by never seen before search query, if today, today uh, a, a new, property, new property is uh, launched, H water, for example. So each water is a search term that is not existent before the property was launched. So Google Rank Brain has this artificial intelligence AI to actually learn and actually um, present better results, right? So that's so next we come. Is Google all about keywords, right? So that is what we need to know. Is, is Google all about keywords? Not all keywords are made equal. So a lot of people say, for example, if you are a property agent, um, you know, a lot of property agent come to me and say, you know, I want to rank for property Singapore or I want to rank for property agent Singapore. So my, my question to them is, do people search for property agent Singapore? Do people search for property Singapore? Or do people search for three-room apartment in Bedok, for example? So for the context of my US subscribers, basically, are you what if somebody search apartment in Manhattan? So if somebody search apartment in Manhattan could be a student trying to do a project of all the different apartment and trying to do a paper or research paper on that. But what if somebody search a three-room apartment in Manhattan? That has a stronger search intent. So the, the key to successful SEO, even before you look at trying to get the keywords, is you need to know which are the keywords that have the highest commercial intent. That means when people search for this particular keyword, they have the tendency to buy, right? So also the last thing is do not over-optimize the keywords. As you can see, all this Google Panda and all this will come and give you a filter and your search result will go lower, right? Also, the main reason is your website needs to be readable, needs to be understandable by your website visitor, right? So now 
we paint an analogy. Imagine Google stepping into a department store, right? What do Google see? Your website is this department store. Do you have all the categories and all the topics clustered together to make Google know what exactly you're looking for? So for example, if you are doing massage, so there is a, a pain relief massage, there is relaxing massage, and then there are different techniques for pain, pain relief massage, for leg, for hand, for arm, or for some techniques, and then there's also uh, some techniques for re relaxing massage. So you will, you, will you will organize your site having the two types of massage that you provide and then further drill down on the type of treatment or the area of uh, body that you are trying to treat, right? So that is an example. So does Google know the location and service area of your business? So this is very simple. Google gave you a free tool called Google My Business. Google My Business is basically a free tool for Google. What you do is you can list your business in Google My Business. Uh, Google My Business requires you to have an address. Once you key in the address, uh, it will take two weeks or so, or even faster. Google will send you a postcard with the verification code. Once you receive the postcard, you enter the verification code in Google My Business and your Google My Business listing is verified and you can use it forever, right? And how does Google know where your business is located, located, right? How does Google know where your business is located? Because Google My Business has a field called website and Google My Business has an address. So if in the Google My Business, you enter your website, people will know abc.com is situated in Singapore. And then that's where all the local search algorithm will kick in. So when, for example, when people are searching for dress in Singapore, your site will appear. People searching for dress in Malaysia, your site will not appear unless you are servicing international areas, right? So that's just to give you some example. So the question is, is Google page one easy to achieve, right? So we come to this very interesting part where it will be a demo. Let me see. Let me try to share my screen, which is the browser. Just give me a minute. Okay, so can I confirm that everybody is uh, seeing the browser? If you're seeing the browser, can you type browser before I, I, I continue so I know? Can, can, can someone help? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so here we go. Okay, um, thank you very much. So let's do a search called ice sculpture Singapore. Okay, as you can see, this is not screenshot. Huh? So it's live on the internet. You can search it later. So I Sculpture Singapore, 12 million 200 uh, results, 12.2 uh, million results, right? So I, I, firstly, I want to run through with you what are the, what are the so-called different uh, sections, right? Um, let me see. Okay, as you can see here, AD is actually at. Okay, so this is the search engine result page. So when you see AD, this is at, right? When you go down, when you go down, these are so called organic search results. Sometimes you will see this, this is called the image Mac pack. Uh, uh, sorry, the image pack. Image pack, uh, P A C K, image pack. Then you go down. These are all organic results again. Uh, yeah, sometimes you will see people also ask, right? And then you scroll down. These are 
organic result and you will see this thing called the uh, map pack this is map pack map map okay so let's analyze for my client this is the seo client that i did for them so we discount the two ads right so my client is on google page one number two ice carving singapore.com i was able to get i was able to get them on the google image tag i'll show you i'll show you what i mean by that so if you click on the image you will see this particular thing hey this image is quite nice i huh? got logo and all that so when somebody is inquiring they will see oh i like this sculpture very much love right oh it's by tak lee icecarvingsingapore.com okay so they will go to this website and inquire about it right so okay so we have a uh, google page one number two image map pack two listing there and then we go down uh below the image map pack this is another listing so we've got one two three three listing we'll come to people also ask later we have a pinterest this is listing number four and we have here ice carving singapore this is listing number five so how about that ladies and gentlemen 12 million uh results for ice sculpture singapore a uh, normal search engine result page have 10. i help my client rank five so the answer to that question is is google page one easy to achieve google page one is easy to achieve but multiple google page one is difficult i show you another example very quickly uh, and that is to show you an example of how a youtube video actually can appear So the search term is wedding ice sculpture you see the normal thing the image map pack here we are ranked here we are ranked this is the competitor iceman here we have map pack we have the pinterest here and this is a youtube this is a youtube video that is being ranked in the organic search result so okay coming back to the slides so as you can see uh this is the script this is the uh print shot of some weeks back so the the number of results is less right so you can see um google page one number two number three number four there's a image uh there's a map pack um on the right and uh, there's also number nine pinterest right so recap ice capture singapore 11.7 million results a uh, google search engine results page has 10 results five listing on google page one for 11.7 million results number two number three is an image map pack listing uh number four number nine and a map pack listing right so multiple google page one listing is unlocked so you guys must be wondering how did he do it right so this comes to the very important part okay don't leave the training because if not then you won't get the gist of it getting into the mind of google is very important to understand how google think so that we can get into the good books ranking in google without the need of using black hat seo none of these methods that i use are black hat seo in fact my number of backlinks is very little but yet i'm able to rank right so google look at whether your website when google visit is it topical is it grouped in terms of keywords and synonyms 
you know, the, the keywords that repeat on the different pages stresses that this page is on and about the keyword, but you do not go crazy over it. Second, authority. So Google look at whether your website has authority. And in that sense, Google look at backlinks. You know, how many people are linking to you? Do you have uh, prominent, you know, uh, news sources that are linking, uh, linking to you? For example, you have a revolutionary product, right? Uh, then you will get the news involved, right? Uh, quality backlinks rather than quantity backlinks matter. Do you have social media? Do you use uh, press release, right? And also Google looks at how fast you accumulate your, your backlinks. Do you go at a gradual speed or you do you one shot, you get a thousand backlinks. If one shot get a thousand backlinks, then it is a red flag in Google and Google will, algorithm will kick in and check, right? So you must also tell Google that your website is contextual, meaning if you're talking about Apple, Google must have hints of all the surrounding, the surrounding pages to get a hint of whether you're talking about the Apple, the fruit, or Apple, the company. So context, uh, contextual and topical is very important in your website to get ranked, right? And also you look at relevancy, right? Relevancy, is your website relevant today? How long, you know, how long people stay on your website? So all these plays a part, right? Google will see whether your website is relevant. If Google see that your website is relevant, Google will, will basically uh, rank your website better as compared to others, right? So today is a dominant force in the search. Google.com is number one. Google, uh, YouTube.com is the number two search engine in the world. Google has an impressive uh, market share and no other search engine has used it as a verb. Can you Google it, right? So now we come to the important part where a lot of you will be asking, you know, what do I do before SEO, right? What can I do before, you know, before SEO? So definitely one of the things that you can do before SEO is this. You need to have a market research. You need to understand what is your market. Your market. Are you marketing to everyone? It is a very common um, misunderstanding that a lot of people have. You know, I'm in a weight loss business. I can market to anyone. Yes, you can market to anyone. But let me ask you, do you have the financial capability to go against the big boys? If not, then you have to niche down. That is what I mean, right? So basically, um, how do you work, right? Um, weight loss. Let's say my market is weight loss. I will niche down. Okay, I'm doing weight loss for women. That's my niche. My sub niche could be weight loss for women who have just given birth. So the key, ladies and gentlemen, is to conquer weight loss for a woman who has just given birth and then you try to broaden your niche a bit and you target weight loss for a woman who are trying to get married. You see my point? Rather than you say, you know, all women that want to weight loss, then you are up against the big guys. So you, it is very important that you do a market research to niche down and to conquer the market, for example, weight loss for women who have just given birth and then you can go broad a little, bro, a little broader to do uh, weight loss for women who wants to get married, right? So after you know the market, it's very important that you know who is your customer avatar. Can you map your customer to, a, to your niece, your 19-year-old niece that, you know, has a certain circle of friends, has a certain uh, influence of music, a certain influence of fashion? Are you able to map? If you're able to map, then are you able to also ask her friends whether if, for example, you're selling dress, whether is, this is something that they want to wear. Because if, if this dress is targeting them, then you can actually ask them. Because if you don't map your customer avatar to a person, you will not be able to get real genuine feedback from the ground. Right? 
Next, when you look at your competitors, it is very important. You must know where your competitor's playground is. What social media are they on? Are they, you know, running ads? You know, are they doing offline marketing, right? Are they doing uh, locality marketing? That means you come near their restaurant, they give you a flyer. The flyer has a QR code. You enter your name and email address. They send you a free coffee um, voucher that you can show the next time that you come in. So these are all location-based. And the next thing that is not really SEO but is kind of tied in is how do you get leads? For example, if you want someone to give a name and email address, right, um, you must give them something, right? So giving an example, like for example, I step up. No host bar, you know, nothing. I step up to give this SEO training. I posted in this uh, COVID-19 for freelancers and uh, uh, creatives group. I was able to get 400 people because the thing is that I offer the value above any other thing, right? So things like that. Are you able to offer value above any other thing? And then later on, when people know you, people experience you, people come for my training, people watch a few of my YouTube videos, people know me, and then slowly um, you, can, you can really try to help people and then people will approach you for some services if they require, right? So that is an example, right? So other considerations is like you need to nurture them. Do you have a customer relationship management system? Do you have PDPA? Unfortunately, uh, uh, compliance to PDPA is very important, uh, but it's not covered in this session. If you wish, we can have another, we can have a PDPA session soon, right? Um, so this is things to do before SEO. So SEO is not about keywords, you know, it's about market, about customer, about competitors, about leads, how you're going to put them together. Now, SEO process. Keywords, as what we said, you must know the keywords with commercial intent on buying keywords. For example, property doesn't work anything. It has to be like three room apartment in some place. Then you know that somebody will have the tendency to search and buy or rent, right? Structure, imagine Google walking into a department store. How well organized is your website? Are those related topics all clustered together or not? Right, that is important. Then uh, content, you need to have certain on-page SEO strategies, which we, will, which we will come in a while. Images, how you optimize your images on your website and Google Photos. Do you have videos? Now, a lot of companies are put off. I don't have the video capability. How do I do that? Right, so for example, coming back to the ice, carving ice sculpture example, they have pictures of ice sculpture. So all we need to do is just maybe just smack their logo there using simple Photoshop, smack a logo there, smack a URL there, have about 15 photos, and then you go online and search image to video converter. Most of these converters are free. Some can even allow you to put uh, music, and there you are you have a video for your business already, right? Uh, and again, next we talk about backlinks, right? SEO is about backlinks, right? But don't go crazy. Uh, qual um, qu quantity or quality? Quality is more important. Just a minute. Nah? So it's all about common sense for SEO. Next, we come to the anatomy of the website. So when Google look at the website, what do they look at? Uh, these factors, a lot of them are, uh, there are some that is not so prominent, but normally we look, uh, look at it in totality, especially if you have a very competitive niche like property, then all these factors play a part, right? So domain and web hosting, more often than not, if your service area is in Singapore, more often than not, it is preferable for you to get a domain uh hosting or a uh, web hosting in singapore right preferable and right now you need to have the secure sockets layer it is a must already it's no longer an option for seo right your hosting company will be able to uh, tell you how you're going to set it next we come to the internal or on-page factors so you talk about what kind 
of content management uh, software? Is it WordPress? Is it Wix? SEO is platform independent. It doesn't matter which platform you use, even if you use static HTML, you can rank for SEO. But it's only a bit more tough. For example, if you use WordPress, there are, there are certain tools that can help you, right? We'll come to that. Next, the external off page factors. Very important, if you use WordPress, there is this tool called the XML, the Google XML sitemap generator. How this works is the moment, all you need to do is just update your WordPress frequently, this XML sitemap generator plugin will auto generate the new pages into this Google sitemap. Google sitemap is a format that Google search engine understands. And you will uh, basically connect this Google sitemap to this uh, free tool called Google Search Console. And then Google will be informed every time your website is updated, Google will crawl your website in the next crawl cycle. We don't know when they will crawl, but we just know that Google will crawl, right? Uh, normally, based on experience, whatever updates that you do, whatever enhancements of SEO that you do, normally it will take about one to three weeks for things to happen, right? Next, it's very important that you have tracking. Uh, so you will install, for example, Google Analytics. This will tell you the visitor numbers of your website. And another thing to install is Hotjar. Hotjar, when you install on your homepage, how people navigate, Hotjar will record a video for every visitor. And there is a free, uh, there's a free plan for Hotjar. If I'm not wrong, it will record about 100 uh, behaviors on video on your homepage. Then you can see. And Hotjar also has Hotmap, uh, which part people click which part people didn't click. And then you can know how your website fare. So having all these tools is very important. Then you also will install things like uh, uh, Facebook Pixel if you're doing marketing. So how this Facebook Pixel works is, for example, if you're using SEO to get traffic for your website, then you can, you, you can run a Facebook ad that says, people who have visited my website over the past 180 days. Because this Facebook Pixel is in your website, you will be able to have this information to run a Facebook ad to say, to give a free offer or something like that, right? Um, yeah, so we come to statistics and the Google uh, sitemap uh, generator is a secret informant to Google. And, you know, you just say, you know, hey, you know, I got new content, please come and crawl and Google will crawl. So next we come to this uh, important topic of on-page SEO. So for example, if you're talking about chocolate donuts, this is an example. Um, <clears throat> chocolate donuts uh, from, from uh, Mary's Bakery, right? So chocolate donut, you will see that basically in your main page title, you must have chocolate donuts, right? Then you have the subtitles. Uh, okay, let me see if I can get the, the highlighter. Okay, so this is the main uh, page title. You have the chocolate donuts, and then you have the, the subcategory. This is chocolate donuts, for example. And then you have this image. So the image name, you have to change to chocolatedonuts.jpg, right, before you upload. So here will be, uh, you know, whatever, lah, plate of chocolate donuts.jpg or something like that, right? So sometimes you don't use chocolate donuts. Sometimes you use words like perfect donut. So these are synonyms. So try not to repeat uh, chocolate donuts too much. So the general rule of thumb is chocolate donut on the top or on the page title. And the, the first paragraph, you must at least mention chocolate donuts. Then somewhere in the middle, you must at least mention chocolate donuts like maybe two times or three times, depending on how long your text is. And towards the end, you must mention chocolate donuts. And that's about it, you know, for on-page SEO. So now on-page SEO is done, off-page SEO. Off-page SEO is about backlinks. Backlink, backlink, backlink. So there is also a consideration of link popularity. Is it a case of getting as many links as possible? No. So 
Google look at your link reputation more important. That means, what is your link? Is your link uh, someone from the, um, basically, is your link someone from the, from the news site? You know, is your link someone from the news site? If your link uh, is on the, from the news site, your link reputation is more important, right? So Google look at that. And also Google look at link diversity. Where are your links coming from? Are you mainly, you know, links with forum signature links? No longer works, ah. Huh? Forum signature links no longer works. Okay? Uh, it no longer works. So your link diversity is very important. Where are your links coming from? So sometimes you will, you will ask blogger to write about your products. Sometimes you will list on prominent directories. Sometimes you will get a news coverage. So you must have a good link diversity or of your link profile as what as what google sees next also the speed of your link building is very important like what i say don't go crazy one shot get a thousand back links huh? that is a clear red flag to google okay next immediate tips on improving seo for your business Okay, so remember the Google love Google concept. So we have we have covered this hosting in the same country that your business is in, uh, keyword in domain preferably, buy a SSL secured domain for your site, beautiful images. So if you are an interior design company, you have beautiful images and too little text. How does Google know what your business is about if you don't have text? Google cannot make that contextual link to to understand what's what's your business about because there are more images than text right and also beautiful images will more often than not lead to uh load site uh i mean load speed load speed issues right your website will be slow right pay attention to mobile optimization of your site this is very important right you must have uh, most teams assuming you're using wordpress have responsive design if you're using shopify and all that they also have teams that have responsive design right take note of the load speed right big images unnecessary scripts too many plugins right content optimization you must remember that to, you are writing to your visitor then the search engine so do not write for the search engine and repeat the keyword so many times and the visitor find it very difficult to read your article that's no no. Always optimize for visitor first. Ensure that you write in your topical relevance, contextual relevance. Topical means in this particular topics, you have certain topics. Contextual means are you able to link a series of pages together or posts together to form like a series? For example, the massage example, you have two types of massage treatment. Can you bunch a, a, a bunch of content talking about this massage treatment? and another bunch of content talking about the other massage treatment right so that's what i mean right local seo local location optimization list your business in google my business and then you list in general directories and trade directories using the same business name same business address format and phone this is called nap and this is called local citation so how google works is that google will see all the local citations that you have apart from Google My Business and Google will also match Google My Business and Google will say, okay, this is a legit business because it has listing in the various prominent directories. So that's how it works. Video optimization, YouTube optimization. Are you leaving money on the table for not being on YouTube? YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google, having a presence in YouTube and optimize it for search. We probably can have a topic on YouTube optimization. It's a topic by itself right next social media images and go live technology study where your competitors have their presence in have presence in social media have uh, branded images in google photos as you can see in the tuckley example so we'll come to a very short while announcements okay please take a snapshot of this building a powerful personal brand with video with Yen Chong. So Yen Chong is a strategic branding and 
media marketing specialist and the founder of Yen Chong Videos Production. He advises SMEs, organizations, and startups in the area of effective strategic branding execution, integrated social media strategies, leveraging on the power of videos to excite, inform, and engage. Right? Yen Chong specializes in using video marketing strategies to solve the corporate pain points and achieve their marketing and business objectives. So Yen Chong is a very good friend of mine and we have also done projects together. So please take a snapshot of this uh, URL because you guys attended my talk, right? You have priority uh, registration as compared to the group in the Telegram. So uh, can, do you need more time? Or have everybody taken a snapshot of this? Because I, 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 I want you guys to have a, you know. Uh, can I have done if those, those uh, can I have the comment done if those that are done? Ah, uh, thank you, Cindy. So please copy the link uh, that, that, that Cindy sent. <laughs> okay, if not, then you can, you can PM me. Uh. Okay, next, I just want to just uh, run through. This, don't worry, this is not a selling session, right? I, I just want to run through. So this is one and a half, almost one, uh, about one hour with me, right? So this is only the gist of SEO. So I've got a one day SEO, 100% skills future credit claimable, $500, right? But 100% skills future credit claimable. So we will cover what is SEO. What do you do before you start SEO? You know, how to think like a search engine spider, the anatomy of the website and how this affects SEO. On-page and YouTube optimization and off-page. And we'll give you a SEO mind map for success, right? So of course, uh, you are in the Telegram group already, but benefits of this is I will also organize a free monthly Ask Me Anything for students, right? And also, I am in the midst of building a learner's vault that will contain 60 videos on digital marketing topics, right? So in case any one of you are interested, there are actually two dates, uh, two dates, right, that is stated there, but you can just copy the link first. Uh, one date is in December. Uh, one date is in December. I think it's uh, 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 12 December, and another one in January. Right? I I, I can't remember the date of January, but um, if you guys are interested, you know you can always just copy the link first. Right? Yeah. Okay. Anybody need time? All all done, right? For this one, so yeah, okay, I've done. Yeah, yeah, this is the cost on uh, the, the, the cost outline with double done. Okay, okay, sorry, the cost outline is this. So, like, uh, again, just very quickly, uh, what is SEO? What do you do before SEO? You know, research, understanding keywords, right? Uh, short, what is short tail, what is long tail. A little bit more lah, how you uh, you know understand Google Trends, Google Keyword Planner, how you actually go through the whole SEO process, you know, uh, you know, does domain name uh, affect SEO? What are some of the um, you know what you need to do basically? Oh no, uh, sorry, this course is a is a physical course. Yeah, this is a physical course. It's a classroom course. Uh, I'm only limiting it to about 20 students. Uh. Yeah, just, just to keep, because I basically need to book a room that is for 40. No, face-to-face -face course uh, in a classroom setting. I basically need to book a room that can host 40, but I can only host 20 packs, right? So it's, it's going to be very, uh, quite cozy session, uh, 20 packs. 
in uh, December and uh, January. There is no assessment, right? There is no assessment. Uh, I'm, I'm actually trying to book the venue. The venue is Singapore Shopping Center, but uh, also depends on, you know, uh, the, 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 the sign up. Lah. Don't worry, we'll, we'll have a Q&A after this, you know. I, I, I am not intending to, to sell this uh, much, but in case if you guys have any Q&A, we can always uh, uh, chat on this, right? So that's all, folks. Uh, take note of this URL. So imsecrets.imseoking.com. This is my Facebook page. The second link is imseo coach.com slash internet marketing secrets this is the telegram group that you are in the last one is my youtube channel right okay just take a snapshot right okay can i move on to the q a now all right yeah okay just just quickly take a snapshot Perfect. Okay. So now we come to questions. Huh? So I will address these three questions before I op open up to the floor, right? Okay. So the first question is by JK in Telegram group. So in, in the context of SEO, how to plan budget and plan for it? How to make it sustainable without uh, too much hassle. So I am assuming that if you are a freelancer and you want to do SEO, um, one of the most tedious part of SEO or two parts of SEO that is most tedious is the article writing and also the outreach to get backlinks. So that the, but there is also an issue of finding reliable suppliers to do this. Article is not an issue. Article, you can use Fiverr, but a lot of the Fiverr suppliers are, are you know, the quality is not there. So, of course, you can, you can try to commission two Fiverr writers uh, and then you combine their two articles into one article, but that is also tedious because you need to rewrite certain things. So assuming that you, you are doing it everything yourself, right? Freelancer, everything one-man show. So it is good that you start all these things by yourself, but eventually there are certain parts that you will find it too tedious. When you find certain part tedious, then you will, you will slowly... Uh, outsource so budget uh, and plan for it so if you are using SEO to accept client I would suggest I would suggest that you actually try a project on your own and see that there is results uh, you, 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 you try a project first and you see that there is results first before you actually accept client, right? So um, a lot of newbies, they are very nervous in trying to get SEO to try to get rank. If you are starting an SEO project, uh, just take note that uh, if you are starting an SEO project, just take note, uh, at least be prepared for three weeks before the, 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 the traffic actually come, right? So now, the next question is by Kayleen. Yeah, uh, Kayleen texted earlier that she had to, some emergency that she had to uh, rush to the hospital or something. So I promised her that I will address her question here. So hi, Kayleen. Is there any way to determine what aspects of your SEO strategy are more successful than others? Okay, this is a very good question because SEO, there is a lot of components right so i would say that a big portion of seo is spent in research 
in researching the market, niching down, understanding how the competitor play in the online and offline space, and also uh, uh, basically understanding the developments. That means constantly monitoring the competitors. Uh, like for example, three months ago, competitors was not on uh, Instagram, but suddenly they go on Instagram, but you are still not on Instagram. So it's not about SEO per se, but it's more like SEO, um, social media marketing, and also uh, paid ads as well. You must understand how your competitor play. So if you are a restaurant, you walk past your competitor and then you realize that they are giving out brochures but you are not so this is something that you can do and then the brochure you know they they have qr code they capture name email address and then they give a free coffee but you are not doing it so um marketing unfortunately uh is more than seo seo in itself can help you bring traffic but it cannot uh be your only traffic source of course when you just start you don't have a lot of budget so you will you will basically think that, uh, you know, just SEO. But but when you are more established, you will look at things like social media marketing and all that. So then, okay. So, Kaylin, I hope I an uh, uh, I answered your question. So, Jedi Huang, as a first time digital marketer, how do I convince someone or company to trust in me? This is a very uh, important and very real for freelancer when i was freelancing uh, more than 10 years ago i did not have any portfolio whatsoever so there are more often than not you are desperate to get portfolio so more often than not you will try to slash price do things for cheap get portfolio but i'm not i'm not suggesting that you do this for a very long time right once you have certain portfolio going I would suggest that if possible, you just do a, if possible, you just do a sole proprietorship. At least it's a company name, right? Once you do a sole proprietorship, it's a company name. It's not to Eugene. For example, it's not to Eugene Tan, right? It's by ABC company. You can afford to charge at least 15% more, right? That's the thing. Right, so so I hope I understand. Uh, I answered the question. So, one of the things that you can do to is this to build your online portfolio. What I mean by that? So, as as you can see, I am really conducting a series of training that is totally free to you. Uh, so, if you benefit from tonight's session, please take down this link. This link is a recommendation link in my LinkedIn profile. So, if you really found that this training is useful, all I ask is just write me a recommendation on LinkedIn. And this is how, as a freelancer, you can build your uh, profile, your credibility. This is called social proof. So for example, if you have training, you screenshot, you create an album, oh, I'm doing this. So for example, uh, you know, I'm having this training, I, I do the poster, I post out on my profile, people are interested, my friends are interested, they join this Telegram group. That's what I mean. These are social proof. The more you do, the better your social proof uh, improves, the better your social media presence improves, and also give opinion pieces in social media. Uh, be a thought leader of certain things. So if you're really good in web design and there's a latest trend of web design, try to try to get on it, try to make some comments about it, try to create an, a, a simple article maybe in LinkedIn and let's see whether you get traction. So this is some of the way, right? Um, okay, so we will, we will open to the floor for questions, right? Uh, yeah, we, we, we've got about 15 minutes for questions. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from here. And then after that, if 
some of you feel comfortable, you can just unmute yourself and ask. Okay, I'll ask. I'll answer these uh, three questions in the chat. Jesse Tan, I have a series of new products. SEO is very new to me. What is the first step and what is the next step? So, for example, uh, first step is you need to um, you need to research your competitor, right? Uh, one of the thing that you can do is to actually um, go into Google Trends, right? Uh, let me show you. Okay, so Google Trends. So for example, if, if let's say for example, I want to sell uh, salt lamb. Okay, I'm just, I'm just giving an example, salt lamb. Okay, so this is an example of Google Trends search, uh, salt lamb. This is in a country that you want to sell, assuming that is uh, United States over the past 12 months. This is uh, showing you the trend in United States. And this is actually showing you the particular state. And when you know this particular state, uh, which has a higher demand, then you can actually uh, use, for example, Facebook ad targeting to target this particular state, like people staying in this state, your offer or whatever, right? So this is one of the way. One of uh, the uh, research tool is Google Trends. Uh, the other is you just need to understand how your competitor play. And remember the niche, the weight loss example, you need to niche down. And you need to find a place where you can compete and you are not up against the big fish, right? So for example, you are selling honey, right? And there's a big honey player, but you need to niche down a particular type of honey that perhaps the big player are not focusing that much. And then you try to build your SEO around that particular type of honey, right? And then slowly you move uh, up. So like, for example, weight loss for women who have just given birth, I make sure I consolidate that position in my SEO. And then I do weight loss for women who want to get married. That is what I mean, right? So I hope that I uh, answered your question in terms of strategy. Jediaya Huang, due to the high price of SEO, I found that many people are unwilling to even let me do it for free now um there are seo companies that say you know uh don't rank don't pay but then again uh if you have overheads then there is a problem let's say for example you just you just take a co-working space uh you know office then you have certain overheads it's not a lot but if every client you know asks you to do free then uh, you know it's it's very tough. So SEO is about education. I I do agree. A lot of people will just brush it off. A lot of people will just think that I will just use uh, Google Ads. But SEO is a long term strategy. SEO is a long term strategy. Google Ads you end up paying, and then the clicks keep on increasing. So one of the strategy is that the company buying Google Ads and then you are doing SEO or you are doing Google Ads and SEO for them. The keywords that have SEO ranking, you can reduce it from the Google Ads. So that is one strategy, right? Uh, wait, uh, hold on. I'm getting some questions. Hold on. Uh. Okay, so Jedediah, I hope I answered your question. If not, then uh, we... Uh, you drop me a message in Telegram and then we can, you know, discuss more. Right. So, Jesse Tan, I'm starting from ground zero. 
I got products, but I don't know how to sell online. So if you're starting from ground zero, you have products, you don't know how to uh, sell online, assuming that it takes a lot of time to, to understand what is Shopify and all this kind of thing. So my, my suggestion to you is start selling on Carousel first. You don't have to set up an e-commerce store just for the sake of setting up an e-commerce store. You, if you sell on Carousel, then what you do is you have, you have less things to learn if you sell on Carousel. All you need to do is just learn how the art of copywriting and how to do nice images, which you can outsource. And then you sell to sell through Carousel. Because if you are, sell, you are setting up your own um, e-commerce site, you need to know, you need to know, should I use WordPress, WooCommerce, or should I use Shopify? I don't know. Then I need to learn which team is the best for conversion. Uh, I need SEO and all that. So rather than that, put that out of the equation first. Sell on Carousel. Learn how to write copywriting. Learn how to do uh, Facebook ads copywriting. Learn how to create nice, engaging videos uh, for your product. And then all the Facebook ads, everything, uh, lead to the carousel page so you have less things to worry about right seo yes seo will work but sometimes in the newbies when you have a product that you believe that will sell then test it out on carousel right that, that's what i'm 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 uh, trying to say right um joanne okay joanne ho can you explain this i'm confused about the weight loss for women who have just given birth to wanting to get married what's the relationship between the two very simple i am in the weight loss business rather than i focus on weight loss for men weight loss for women who want to get married uh weight loss for women who have just given birth what i'm trying what i'm trying to say is i'm in a weight loss business yes i can focus on all this market i can one shot do a shotgun approach to all this market but I do not have the ad budget to play with the big guys. So what do I do? I do weight loss for women who have just given birth. I consolidate my position there because perhaps the big guys, uh, because the big guys are doing shotgun approach, and perhaps this is an area that I can dominate. So what I'm trying to say is try to find an area that you can dominate, and dominate it. Then once I dominate weight loss. For a woman that has just given birth, I can go and explore another vertical that is weight loss for women who want to get married. That's what I mean. Uh, that's what I mean. There, there is no direct linkage with the two, but I'm trying to say you try to conquer one market first, and then you you actually try to conquer the other market. I hope I hope I understand your I, I answer your question. Just a minute. Okay, Ben Lua, I have my own bakery since established since 2017, but the online growth is not fully optimized. Seeing new competitors ahead of me in Google search ad and getting media attention. Am I able to win the search without paying for media posts and just use SEO? Okay, so... The thing is this, uh, let me give you an example. So, uh, Tuckley Icework was my client 10 years ago. I did SEO for them. Only uh, they, they approached me about two, three years ago. They realized that their competitors' SEO has improved over them. So, they engaged me uh, just using SEO within, within a year or so. Yes, we are able uh, to get the ranking back so it is possible but seo is not a quick fix solution if you need business business bad and if you have the budget then you spend on google ads uh, it will give you better and just to give you context if you have money to spend on google ads and facebook which one is better just that you guys will understand that uh, google is a demand base people search for something then you show 
So there is always a demand in Google search, whether is it Google Ads or SEO. Whereas in Facebook, people don't go Facebook to buy. Facebook is just an inferred interest thing. So I infer that you visit a lot of Facebook page of dresses. I infer that you are interested in dresses. You could be doing a research for a school project. So in terms of laser target traffic or which, is, which has given you more traffic, assuming that you are able to identify your commercial keywords or keywords with high search intent, then definitely Google has a better laser targeting as compared to Facebook uh, ads, right? So the answer to your question, uh, Ben Loire, is yes, uh, but if other people are playing search ads, and while waiting for SEO to kick in, you unfortunately, you will have to play search ads also because your competitor is playing search ads. Just like uh, Takli, their competitors are buying ads. Takli also has to buy ads. So the amount of ad dollar you spend depending on how aggressive your competitor is in terms of ads, right? So, okay, why S is... SEO ranking worldwide or just Singapore only? Uh, generally, it is Singapore only because how does Google know? Google see your website. Where does it appear? Which listing in Google My Business appear? If your Google My Business is in Vietnam, then it applies to Vietnam search. If it's a Vietnam business, right? So the story or the assumption is most of us are either doing um, businesses in Singapore or are helping clients in Singapore. So our Google My Business is always Singapore and that's why the website is always Singapore. And when you do, uh, when you just type google.com, you, you, you actually more often than not, you will be redirected to google.com.sg. So the answer is uh, Singapore, but it can be a global context as well. Because if you rank for Singapore, certain keywords, more often than not, the global uh, search, if somebody from US search, they will, your website will also rank. But the only thing is that the, the Google Pigeon will kick in because Google Pigeon will say that your business is not serving US. So they, may, they might not even serve your, uh, your search ranking for somebody in US uh, searching for that particular business that you are doing, right? So I hope that answers. Uh, that's uh, YS. Desmond, how does long tail keywords come into the picture? So the concept of uh, short tail keywords and long tail keywords is this, for example, uh, Property Singapore and uh, four room, uh, four-room flat, four-room flat in Pasir Ris, for example, or four-room flat in Manhattan, right? Is this four-room flat in Manhattan is considered a longer tail. Long, long tail means there are more words as compared to the short tail. So how it works is that the more words you have, generally, it's easier to rank, but generally, the search volume is lower, right? So you use a uh, tool like the, the uh, Google AdWords Keyword Planner to help you see the demand, the monthly search uh, volume, and then you decide which keywords to do. So generally, um, it's no longer keyword centric. Last time used to be, you know, you rank a few long tail keywords. Now Google with uh, Hummingbird, uh, Rank Brain, and, and all these animals coming into the picture and playing together, they are no longer existing on its own. It exists as a core update, right? So all these core updates, they work hand in hand to ensure that your website has quality. And one way to look at website as quality is your website cannot be just keyword centric. The keywords or the pages must reference one another if they are related. And that's how Google see. So in a way, you are trying to build a, a mini Wikipedia within your website, right? That's what I mean. Okay, so, so yeah, Joanne, Joanne got it. Yeah, segment by segment first. Yes, that's right. Uh, okay. 
how long does it take timothy chu how long does it take to optimize a website with seo generally for seo it takes generally three to six weeks depending on again on how aggressive your competitor is playing the seo game so if you are in a, like certain industries are considered sunset industries they don't really play the seo game especially in the b2b space manufacturers and all that most don't play seo but you have to see you have to do research if those that don't play seo very easy within within two weeks some within within uh three four days you can rank for the the certain keywords so generally when you do seo it takes maybe maybe five days you get on page five then the next five days or next three days uh you should get on page three then another another week or so you should hope, uh you should get on page one that's the general uh guideline uh let me see jesse thanks for advice i need to register a brand name first okay let me see uh hang on uh. okay jesse says uh thanks for advice i need to register a brand name first then can sell on carousel uh yeah preferably because you you have a shop name you know, on carousel right um okay so ben was say thanks uh eugene is very clear already rick tan says thanks for sharing eugene very useful knowledge you are sharing um jesse tan i need to have a website before i sell on carousel not necessary okay ben ben Lua. I've been using Facebook ads for reach, but no conversion. So I wonder if Google ads would be more accurate investment for conversions. Sounds like it is since it's laser target the audience who are already interested. Appreciate your kindness to share and kudos to you. Yes, as why I said, uh, Google ads is search intent. You see, people go to Google to search for something. So if you, for example, if you laser target four room, you know, four room HDB flat in, in Pasiris, for example, three room HDB uh, flat in Pasiris or in Amokyo. Let's say you're a property agent, you just play on Amokyo. So two room, three room, four room, you laser target all this, right? You have a higher chance of converting as compared to Facebook because Facebook is just, what can you target? Or uh, maybe people working in banking, people, you know, but it, again, it's, it's inferred targeting and then you have to stack and then facebook ads are getting more and more expensive uh facebook algorithm happy happy trigger happy can ban you for certain words you use you know so again uh you have to test you have to test then you know right um why s how can we use seo to reach out to foreign markets in other countries okay good question uh if if you are a company with google my business who is a a portion of your website will talk about your business in vietnam so for example abc.com slash vietnam then what you do is that the google my business will point to a abc.com slash vietnam to let google know that this website is has multiple location that's how you do it to link your website to multiple location so that when you know when people searching for vietnam because you have a google my business because you have the local citation in their local directories people will know that your business is also servicing uh vietnam as well right um rodney lim thank you eugene your session has been very useful for me as a novice um Garfield Yip, if I register my company using a home address that I work from home to offer services to clients, must I definitely use my home address to register in Google My Business? Okay, this is a very good question. Let me show you. Uh, I'm assuming you guys are in Singapore, right? Um, there is a way that we can mask our home address, right? um what is it called
Okay, you guys take note. There is this service. Okay, there's this service called uh, Singapore Post My Mailbox. So I think if I'm not wrong, it's a, it's a 99 for one year. So what you do is they give you an address that you can use for your business address. And what SingPost does is this address, SingPost will internally route to your home address. So your home address is masked. And your, you probably can use, I, I have not tried, but you probably can use this to verify uh, uh, your, your Google My Business listing with this, with this, right? All right. Uh, anybody want to ask me like, you know, like physical question? Also shy, eh? all the one who, on video we we should take a snapshot you know okay tell you what can those that not so shy can can on camera so that we can just try to take a snapshot there are three pages don't mind don't mind just try to on camera or something so that we can just take a snapshot and and remember this and then we we can post it in this in, in the telegram group so that we remember that we attended this training, right? Thank you so much. There are three pages, huh? so you all have to hold. Huh? I have to give me some time because I'm I'm not used to all this screenshotting thing, right? Okay, smile, huh? page one. Huh? Smile, page one. Hang on, ah. Uh. Okay, page two. Page two. Wow, page two on, got no camera. Page two never on camera. Okay, never mind. We, we, we screenshot page two also. Okay, uh, hang on. Uh. Okay, last page. Hang on. Just give me one minute, last page. All right, we are done. Anybody want to ask any final questions or not? Anybody? Or any any question uh let's let's open the floor any question about being freelancer you know how do you do this and all that it, it can be that topic as well or it can be like you know like COVID 19 how should we gather together and things like that uh i might consider to do uh networking uh, uh like a pure networking session where we will we will each like intro ourselves and what we do and all that kind of thing and then try to see whether we can work together i might consider to do that now that the group is quite big right right so does anybody has any questions uh you know i i, I don't mind staying for a while you know to to have a chat or you know anything still try to get the idea sink into the head <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah, it will it will take some time yeah, yeah, especially um, when, when I'm not a techie, uh, yeah. my other business, everything is being handled by the professionals. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so now I'm retraining myself to understand how to play this game. Uh, if, you, if you need help, I, I mean, I, 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 I do, I do uh, you know, uh, provide this kind of services as well. 
So mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we can always have a non non uh, obligation chat, right? Okay, can. Uh, uh, yeah, don't worry. I mean, it's uh, like not not every, uh, you know, not not everything is is, uh, yeah. chargeable, right? Mm. But but we'll see how it goes. Uh, because I'm 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 trying to launch my new products. That is all the, uh, garden and the uh, you know, um. Garden, garden stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. So does 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 anybody you know uh anybody facing anybody has any burning questions like uh or let's chat about how how does COVID nineteen you know affect you? Definitely, it's very serious. But then, um, of course, the government's uh, GSS do help a bit. Uh. But uh, then again, um, we we are very concerned to let go of the staff as well. So, but then you are, so that's why I'm keeping my staff busy by doing some other fabrication. Yep. See whether we can push out new products. But then the kind of product that I'm doing is not really that wow factor, but it's more like a, you know, like the government now is encouraging people to, to to plant vegetables in your balcony and whatsoever. So I'm going along yeah. that way. But then I'm uh, looking at a competitor's product and everything and so cheap. And then I fabricated several items which I'm using, which I think that is very, uh, very uh, uh, suitable for balcony. But then again, the very many I was thinking that if I were to post it on Carousel, then the copy will be coming in next week or week after next, and then I'll, I'll be our business. So the thing is, how to be a yours? Yours business. might not be Carousel because yours is not really like like fast moving consumer correct. goods. Correct. Like Carousel thing. is a very cheap thing. Yeah. So you buy from China. It's correct. Just correct. So, thing, you know? so it's not for Carousel. That's you know, I I I. I Honestly, I, I don't mind having a chat with you. So mm. I mean, just just to help you out to see, uh, mm. you know, some directions or anything like that. I mean, I, I don't mind having a chat with you. Mm. Uh, just to share everybody, um, does SEO works, right? SEO works. I just I just let you know that uh, during uh, the circuit breaker, um, I think circuit breaker started in like April or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So during circuit breaker, uh, my my friend was badly affected because he's an events company, so mm-hmm. he does events and all that. And you know, when circuit breaker comes in, no events at all, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Thanks, Vivian Tio. Uh, thank you very much for <laughs> you need to drop off, right? Yeah. There, uh, there will be recording. Don't worry, mm-hmm. right? So, um, just just to let you know, I I actually launched a lorry business during circuit breaker because my my, my partner, you know, events was a standstill, but he had two lorries. Mm. So we use SEO to build a site. And uh, till today, people are contacting us for lorry and house moving and all that. The yeah. yeah. So purely SEO. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it does work. It does work. Uh, but you need to know uh, your, your competitor and your competitive advantage, right? Yeah. 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 That's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so really, really thanks. Uh, I think it was a, I think it was a good turnout. I think we had like what, eighty or something, sixty, eighty, right? Just now, right? Um, definitely there will be another session. Uh, do do sign up for video marketing, Yan Chong. That is very very good, right? Uh, and I hope this has been really beneficial for you. And if you guys, uh, you know. You guys really benefit from the session, at least, uh, you know, just, 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 you know, just message me, uh, you know, on, on, on Telegram or whatever. We, we really appreciate the time that you put in for, for free. <laughs> yeah, Cindy was saying that we have 80 from the start, right? Very good. So, Karina, yeah, Karina, uh, what can one expect? Uh, to pay when hiring someone to help you with SEO optimization. So basically, uh, the whole S- SEO optimization process is the person will do the keyword analysis, they will do the competitor advantage analysis, 
they will tell you your competitor are stronger in social media and things like that. And then they will actually do the actual work of optimizing your page, making sure that your page uh, have correlation with one another, uh, trying to get some links for you, trying to get some press release for you and things like that. So that's the whole uh, scope of SEO, which, which we do actually, right? We, we, we do. Uh, we are SEO. Uh, the replay recording is on YouTube. Yes, it is on YouTube right now because it's live on YouTube. Thank you for my YouTube audience to watch. You guys have been my inspiration. And now we have this internet uh, marketing secrets group. 600 people, my goodness. Right. Uh, all 400 of you are from the COVID-19 uh, uh, <laughs> freelancers group, you know. My original group was only 200 something. So you guys came in and became 600 groups, but that, that, is, that is the way it is, right? Um, okay, let me see. Yeah, okay, so I've answered that. Can SEO be done for interactive website? Uh, Lin, I'm not sure what you mean by interactive website. Uh, gone are the days with Flash and all that. But if you're talking about websites that have certain functionality, uh, yes, you can. Because SEO is just uh, keyword centric, making sure the key to good uh, SEO is you have to plan your website uh, structure really well and uh, making sure that it's relevant. And there is something that we didn't discuss and that is the customer flow. When you look at your website, how does the customer flow? Which is the page? Click here, click there and all that. So Google Analytics in advance, you can actually see how your customer flow in your website. And then you can realize that the certain flow is not right. And then you, 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 can, you, you can fix it, right? So, you know, thank you very much for really, uh, you know, coming for my session. I hope that it's been helpful. And if you guys uh, really found this helpful, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also, you know, uh, just drop me a recommendation in LinkedIn, right? So thank you very much. I, uh, Hope that you had a good night. Yes, thank you very much for your time. One last question, right? Margaret Huang is it can SEO be done on Squarespace? SEO can be done anything, it doesn't matter what platform it is. But it's just that if your SEO on, on WordPress, WordPress has this thing called Yoast SEO tool. Yoast SEO tool will help you ensure that your keyword density, the keywords you, you don't repeat too many times. That's about it. But once you have done SEO quite often, you will know the keyword density tool is in the head already. Like for me, I've done SEO for just pure HTML website and I'm still able to rank it without any tools. And the, the sitemap, the sitemap is generally, uh, is manually generated and, and submit to Google. So every time I have a new page, I need to update the, the, the sitemap. You know, that is static HTML. So Google, uh, so SEO is not platform uh, dependent. It's just that some uh, some uh, platforms have certain tools that can help you better, right? Uh, that's all, right? Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope that this has been a valuable session. Hi, Wilson, you're here. Thank you for coming, you know. Thank you, Margaret Huang. Thank you, Doris Ang. You know, Thank you, everybody. Right, really. Thank you. Uh, and we look forward to the next session, which is uh, Yen Chong's one on uh, Tuesday morning. Right. So I, I I see you. Thank you, Cindy, for for helping. Uh, you know, facilitate this. Thank you very much. And good night. Good night. And see you in the Telegram chat. Right. Remember to uh register for Yen Chong's session. <laughs> if not, Yen Chong only one one fella come, then it's quite bad. He's he's really good. And what you do, right? So, so do, do, do register for Yen Chong session. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good night.